Hi everyone, and today we're going to be working on those upper control arms and also hopefully setting up the ride height. Alright, so we got a lot of stuff going on. We have our uh, doors that we have some internal parts and the hinge on. And of course we need to put that on the uh, on the main body to size in the door gaps, but I can't do that until I have the body correct. And so I had to cut out some areas, you can see there for the, uh, uh, that's the gas, and then these two on the sides are for the seat belts to come through. And I had some sh uh, shaving I needed to do here to get this to line up better. And I need to get this thing installed on that firewall perfectly before we actually do any door gaps, which also means we also have to have the whole machine on the ground with the right right height, not exactly the right right height, but somewhere close. So when I'm doing these door gaps and stuff like that, the, you know, it's sitting on the ground on its own, uh, that all tweaks the body a little bit. Now on that note, I've gone through this system a few different times we just got our new upper control arms in that are adjustable, but I'm still having issues getting stuff to line up. You can see how that's perfectly on there. And as we go up here, it's like, whoa, that's two inches to the left. Um, which, you know, you could muscle that stuff in and might have to, but I'm also having some sizing issues with length and how, how much this should be threaded in for full, uh, for, for safety. Um, but I'm also had a great conversation with my, one of my buddies, Seth, and this is in the wrong hole. How I did that, I'm not sure. But the manual says that this needs to be, this retainer needs to be down here, but in all reality, it needs to be up here. So I gotta take this all apart. I gotta move this around, put this in the top hole, and that will get rid of this clearance issue here drop this to halfway down here, this moves up. So a lot of work that I gotta do to kind of get this thing going. And uh, that's what we're planning on doing today. And hopefully this is the last of the rear end shock upper control arm drama. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that these upper control arms, the adjustment is fully out as far as possible, but within a safety spec. And what that means is I can't unthread that adjustment further than the thickness of the thread itself. And so I'm going to be measuring the thickness of the actual eye bolt, if you will, um, and uh, making sure that my threads are even on both control arms before I put them in, so that way I know I'm at a safety range. Now the reason that I'm keeping them full length out as much as possible is that pinion angle right now, the differential is pointing at the ground and I need it to tilt back out, which means opening up those upper control arms so that thing lines back in and my pinion angle is correct. So that's where we're kind of starting at full length and then maybe I might need to dial in from there, but that's my best guess. And right now it doesn't even look like it's going to make it at full length, but there's so many moving parts in that back end in a sense that we're just going to figure it out. And so what I'm going to use is a jack on the body, on the frame, and then I'm going to use a jack on the differential itself and between those two dial it in and hopefully be able to get my bolts in.
Well, that surprisingly went really well and really easy and I'm shocked that I was able to do it by myself without some help from another person because sometimes it's really hard to get those bolts in, but using those two jacks worked out really well. Um, so now I'm gonna actually uh, get this thing up on jack stands, uh, take those wheels off and work on those shocks and get those shocks rebuilt and then into the right holes. And I've gotten different comments on different videos I've actually redone these shocks like, I don't know, four. This is maybe my fifth time working on them. And some of it is the manual wasn't written well. Uh, some of it, there's a lot not in the, even the manual at all. But some of it's also a little bit on my fault of just being overwhelmed with 25 things going on. And uh, I've had comments, you know, from people saying like, you know, why are you jumping around and all that stuff? And it's like, well, because the reality is, is I got, let's say, 16 to 24 hours in a weekend to work on something and if I have a manual that's not written correctly or if I have a tech support issue no one's open uh, if I have a tool that I'm missing and they don't I can't source it locally well if that happens in the first hour of working I'm not going to stop I got 20 hours to go so I need to work on something else so I think people get a little OCD when you're jumping around but you know, if I want to spray paint something, I got to wait 48 hours for it to dry, just like my uh, gas pedal bracket. I'm not going to wait 48 hours and then only linearly work on certain things. I'm going to jump around and do what I can because any time spent is time well spent moving forward. And so that's what I'm trying to do.
So I just got off the phone with my friend Seth, who's really been great at helping me out with a lot of technical information like pinion angle and ride height and stuff like that. And he just schooled me on ride height because I was, you know, talking to him and I'm like, you know, I'd go on the forums and I'd read all this information and people would be like, yeah, you need to set the shock so the angle's at three degrees. And it's like three degrees to what? Like there's no context to any of this stuff. And so I read 10 different posts, 10 different, you know, pieces of information. And I'm still confused. I don't know what's going on because no one's actually explaining this stuff correctly. So then I give a call to Seth and Seth sets me straight. And so that's good. <laughs> so what I just learned is, you know, I was telling him, I'm like, I'm reading all this stuff and everybody's saying how much adjustability is, you know, in, in the right height of the car and all that stuff. And I'm like, I see an upper bolt hole and a lower bolt hole. And I was assuming that any kind of adjustments in the shock was for stiffness of the ride, but that's actually not true. The adjustments in the, in the uh, shock is for actual ride height. And so, uh, and it's pretty linear. So if you're, you know, off a half inch on one side and you move that uh, little adjustment under the coil, a half inch, then you're gonna actually adjust your ride height. So now that I'm adapted to that, I'm gonna dig in and put those adjustments on the car and we're gonna try this, get this car up to the right ride height. So everything went really well. The back is freaking coming out perfect. The pinion angle looks amazing. Um, I'm actually shocked. It's, it's actually going really well uh, because this has been kind of like this unknown entity back there that hasn't been right since day one, mainly because when they changed to version two, they had the wrong upper control arms for it. And so now that that's all dialed in, it's, it's really come together. I got the right right height, but in the fronts, I was working on the right height and I need to actually compress the springs a little bit to get where I need to go. And I tried doing that with an awl, but it's, it's a little tough. There's little holes inside of that, that spinning disc. Uh, so I need a spanner wrench, I believe is what they call it. And it didn't come with the kit. Nobody has it locally. So that's something I have to order online. And this is a perfect example of, yeah, I was ready to finish this up and not move forward until this is finished because I just want to get it done but I don't have the tools and I'm gonna to have to wait a week for it to ship in and I have to find the time to actually order it and remember to order it. So uh, I'm pretty close. I'm about four inches in the back on the right height uh, in the sense of the shock itself and I'm somewhere around three and a half or whatever on the front. Um, but I think the back right now uh, frame-wise is maybe about five or six inches and the front somewhere around three and a half, four inches. Uh, I just wanna get that a little bit higher and then we're good to go. And then I'm not sure where that's going to bring the front nose of the front grill, which is going to be the lowest part of the car. But hopefully we want to get that a few inches off because my Corvette was four inches off the ground and I couldn't get out of my driveway without literally going on a 45 to 60 degree angle out of my driveway. It'd be nice to actually have this car look badass, but also be usable and not scraping the crap out of it. 
after I just painted it and polished it and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's where we are on that side of it. Uh, I'm just going to grab the top of my firewall and start messing around with trying to finish the uh, bottom edge a little bit and kind of get that all nice back onto the car. So these little body modifications that I've done, I could start dialing this in and locking it in for real. <laughs> 